Hello everyone, Iran Stern here to give you a quick overview about the advanced lightning effect. This effect was historically part of the original cult effect bundle from Psycho. I think that since 2000 this is bundled with After Effects. So if I need to define this filter in one line, I will say that the advanced lightning effect will create simulations of electrical discharges. Unlike the lightning effect, which is now under the obsolete category, the advanced lightning doesn't self-animate. If you want to animate it, you'll need to keyframe the conductivity state or other properties such as the origin or the direction. I will show you in a minute. The most cool feature of this effect is without a doubt the alpha obstacle feature. This will allow you to make the lightning go around the designated object. More on this in a moment, but first let's work our way through some of the basic stuff here. When you first apply the effect on a layer, you probably want to turn on the composite on original tick box. This will render the effect on top of your footage as you can see here. I'm using some picture of a pier in a stormy night to demonstrate this. So let's quickly touch on the interesting properties we have here. First, the lightning type. This will specify the characteristics of the lightning. Note that most of the options except for the vertical comes with two pointers, origin and direction. This will let you control the behavior and the look of the lightning. My favorite preset from the type here is the breaking type. So I think I will leave it like this, but I will say that most of them are very cool and I do invite you to play with them and see what you like yourself. Next we have the conductivity state. This will change the path of the lightning and it's very easy to animate this value for a quick and fun animation. Under the core settings, you will find various characters of the core of the lightning such as radius, opacity and color. The glow settings will adjust the glow of the lightning and please note that if you want to disable the glow completely, you'll probably need to set the glow opacity to zero. This is probably a good way to go in a complex project because Turning off the glow will speed up the rendering time greatly. For now, we're going to skip the alpha obstacle and we will come back to it in a moment. So next we have the turbulence, which specifies the amount of turbulence in a lightning path. Higher values here result in more complex strike containing more branches and forks. The forks specifies what percentage of branch is being forked. Then we have the decay value. This will set the amount of continuous decay of lightning. And you can see it mostly, I think, where the opacity of the forks begin to fade out. And at last we have the decay main core. This will allow you to decay the main core along with its forks. Now we come to the expert settings. Here you will find even more settings which will let you specify the complexity of the turbulence in the lightning itself. You'll find there options for defining the minimum pixel distance between new forks. You can also set here a termination threshold and you can calculate collision on the main core. Also you can set some fractal types here and define the percentage to the core drain. And then you can, of course, set the fork strength and variation. Most of these settings are self-explanatory, and if you play with them, you should be able to achieve the precise look you're after. The less obvious one is probably the alpha obstacle, which is also, I think, the cooler of them. So let's take a close look at it now. So here at my second comp, I have an image I've created using Illustrator. This graphic, of course, comes with an alpha channel. And now I'll apply the advanced lightning effect and enable the composite on original feature. And now let's start to play with the alpha obstacle value. 
As you see, the slider goes up to 10, but you can still scrub this value up to 100 on each side. And usually you'll need to set it this way if you want to get the desired result. Then once you found the correct value, you can play with the direction point and now you can see it in motion. You can see that the lightning attempts to warp itself around the opaque areas of the alpha channels of this layer. This feature is basically allowing it to see those pixels, those alpha channel pixels as obstacles. So you can achieve very cool and realistic results playing just with this option alone. From my experience, when you choose this option, you may want to preview your composition in full resolution just to ensure you get the correct rendering result. All right, before I sign off, I just want to share with you two personal recommendations. As most of the effects in After Effects, this effect as well will work great in combination of other filters. Give it a try using the advanced lightning along with the vector blur together. This will create more natural look and you can also create some really interesting background animations. The other filter I use with it a lot is the exposure filter. Just time it to the moment the lighting hits to emphasize the stroke impact on your footage. And that's it! There you have it! An advanced plugin, at least by its name, which doesn't look so advanced after you know it so well. For more information about this effect, you can go to Chris Zwar website, where you find a detailed description of how to use this effect to simulate blood vessel capillaries. I hope you find this short tip useful, and if you want to learn some more, be sure to check my After Effects training DVDs at my website, sternfix.com. Next effect in line is the alpha level effect, so expect another short tip on this website very soon. Until next time we'll meet, this is Eran Stern saying thank you and goodbye.